My name is Willie Little, and I'm originally from Eastern North Carolina. And I currently live in a split time between Portland, Oregon and Oakland, California. The title of this work is Not A Doll, Living Doll. It is a multimedia installation and it has not a dolls that are picking any banks. They're made of ceramic and chalk and they were manufactured in Japan in the 1950s, marketed and sold to white America as a novelty and characterized as black Americana. So with this work, I defiantly reclaim them and represent them and ornately embellish them to defiantly um, elevate and celebrate the beauty of the ill-conceived form of degradation they were originally um, created to represent. And then the assemblage will sit, sit beside um, large-scale figurative portrait-like pieces on uh, uh, panels on canvas. And it suggested the pieces could be living and breathing um, manifestations of today's Black woman. My personal experiences uh, informed my work in many ways because I grew up in the rural South. I grew up in North Carolina. And the funny thing about that is North Carolina experimented with desegregation with my first grade class in 1968. And one thing about that experience as a six-year-old, I learned as an adult to look back on that is hate is learned. And I have seen so much in my life. As I lived in Oakland, um, I witnessed countless protests over the census murders of black people. And one of the events that happened in uh, 2015 was the Freddie Gray case in Baltimore. And the way the protests happened and the way they responded made me really, it, it struck me uh, greatly. And I remembered hearing uh, John John Lewis uh, talking about it because he always talked about race every time he had a chance and he told this wonderful story about him being a young man working with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He said one night uh, late at night Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. walked up to him he said son if you see something say something and do something so that really struck me and it made me want to actually talk about um, the atrocities and and make work that really spoke to how I felt. And I consider myself a social justice, Black Lives Matter cultural worker because I'm always watching and surveilling this spectacle we call our society or our American culture. This work is actually indicative of work I've been creating for over 20 years. The first work I created uh, was in tw uh, 2000 when I responded to the Diallo case. It was an African man who was murdered by police and I created a, f a work. I was invited to South Africa to create a multi uh, pr pr a limited edition prints and that was the beginning of me making work regarding Black Lives Matter and social justice. And, and then I received two Pollock Krasner grants, one in 2005 and one in, 2000, in 2010. One was called In Mixed Company, the other one was In the Hood, and both were in-your-face parodies, social satires, and about the interracial conversations. Of, and the other one was a farcical installation exposing the tea party and wedding it with hip hop culture and I had a 20 foot tall ghetto fabulous clan hood in the exhibit so I must say I have been charged with making work that exposes the injustices um, to our people I applied for this grant because when I when I saw the application I said this is tailor-made for me because finally something is uh, calling to action what I a thing that I'm passionate about so I felt so grateful this happened and I was and I was so excited to apply for the grant and I and also I wanted to use my work to expose 
the, my voice to the greater Pacific Northwest audience. This grant has enabled me to continue my work. It is my destiny and it's my cross to bear. My purpose to educate and enlighten and inspire people to wake up, to self-reflect, self and to make changes in behavior as Americans. What does Black Lives Matter mean to me? It's simple. It means Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter also. As a person of color, what else could it mean? And I take that seriously and as and passionately because I see how many people in, in America devalue the lives of people of color. So I think it's an important cause, an important, an important movement. What do I hope to see the movement achieve? It to create an awareness of what human decency should look like, what compassion should look like, what justice and real change and in the quality of black lives uh, in this country. Uh, I use my platform to unapologetically talk about race and what I see. And James Baldwin said this well, and I, I, I believe this. He said, I absolutely love America more than any country in this world. And exactly for that reason, I insist on the right to criticize it perpetually. Do I think the movement has made positive progress in this community or in our communities? Perhaps, but there's always room for more. What I've seen in my life has always been one step up, two steps back. So there's always, there has always been forces at work to halt the progress. We all have to keep fighting the good fight. There's an African proverb that goes like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We as Americans all need to work together to end white supremacy and bigotry. What do I hope audience take away from my work? I, I want them to be curious. I want them to peel away the layers of the work and self-reflect because there's so many things Americans and, and citizens can learn uh, about what's going on and what's important about Black Lives Matter. What change do you, I hope the themes in my work will inspire? I want people to be inspired to go out, talk to people, befriend people, understand that we are all human beings and that we all have the same goal. We all want to be want to live in the America that America promises all that's all we want that's all we want the thing about me as an artist the way I became an artist is in the first grade my first grade teacher told me I was an artist when every single person was to draw a picture while many of them were drawing stick figures I drew a fool on woman with a gown with elaborate uh, accessories and she said Willie you are an artist so that that made that validated my creativity and from then I hit the ground running and I continued to make work throughout my youth and when I lived in Charlotte I was struggling as an artist trying to find my voice and I had a really horrible first ex exhibition and I f was distraught. And I, and I remembered when I saw the film, The Color Purple, and I saw my life on the screen because my father had an illegal liquor house. And I remember telling stories about that because it was such a wonderful experience. And I talked to another artist and he said, Willie, that's your story. You should do something with that. And then 
it, I started creating work that celebrated who I am and where I came from because I was at first ashamed of being from the rural South. I was ashamed of coming up, growing up poor. So that was liberating and that was the beginning of me making work and make, becoming a serious artist. He was an artist I admire the most. I, I admire two artists uh, for two different reasons. The one who actually has been a mentor is an artist from North Carolina named Juan Logan. And he was the one who told me that I needed to create work about growing up uh, uh, in the rural South and, and my father's legal liquor house. That actually traveled around the country for several years and uh, subsequently went to the Smithsonian. And the other artist who inspires me is Betty Sarr. And Betty Sarr is an educator. She's an amazing assemblage multimedia artist. And I had the opportunity of being on a panel with her in 2010 in California. And I told her I want to be like her when I grow up. Her work is unapologetic. She uses objects in the same way I do. And I absolutely admire her work. Mm -hmm.